right. Um, okay, hi. Sorry, I was a bit late uh, because I had to reset the internet um, first of all. Because yeah, I like to do that before I do the stream because then there's not the whole like. Generally, it means the the quality should be better. Um, but yeah, so sorry. Yeah, sorry, I'm a bit late. Um, yeah, I didn't have didn't have time to deal with that. Um, and then oh, just so many things to try and deal with at the moment. It's really annoying. And uh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess we can play this now. Um, so I really want to go and get a drink. Can I go and get a drink and then we can kick this off? Because I could really do with that. It's been a long old day. And I'd quite like that if uh, if I could have a drink. Yeah, I'm gonna go and get a drink. I'll be one second. Hang on. And my glasses. to expect with this. Absolutely no idea. This is all a bit chaotic this evening, like more so than usual. I don't even know if you can hear me, honestly. Um, but yeah, let's, um, let's get going. Oh man, I just realised I wear this t-shirt every Friday. That's not intentional, I swear. It just happens. Um, right. Good question, Ben. It's a good question. I don't know. Now, the thing that's weird about this is I've got no idea. Um, hey, Garrison Savannah. I've got no idea what to expect with this game. Because this was a game that I think came out when I wasn't living in the UK. And so I missed it, I think. I don't know when it came out, but I'm pretty sure... Um, yeah, I wasn't in the UK when it happened. And so I don't really know that much about it. So, yeah, I'm going into this completely without anything. Uh, yeah, so I don't know what to expect. But, it should be... Hopefully it's going to be good, because everyone says it's good. So let's uh, let's kick it off. Uh, hey, Conor Wilson. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's terrible, isn't it? Hey, Mutt Soup. Yeah. See, I've no idea what to expect. As I said, it's um, hopefully it's going to be going to be a good one. Um, I would like some subtitles because I like that. As always, man. Uh, no, I've not played it before, and I don't know anything about it either. Do you know one of my biggest regrets? Um, over recent years, was when I first got glasses, I didn't go for the ref non-reflective coating thing because I was too cheap because it cost like an extra 20 quid or something. And um, yeah, and I really regret it now because now it just like reflects off all the time. Terrible. Right, let's get going. Um, okay. Right, that's probably about right. Uh, the current time for me is actually ten thirteen. Yeah, I don't know anything about this game, Ben. I know nothing about it at all. Absolutely nothing. I'm worried that people are excited by this because, you know, because of the fact that that usually doesn't bode well for me. Uh, when it's like that. Right. Ugh. Yep, need to do that. That all looks fine. Let's begin. This is the story of a man named Stanley. 
put the shot glass in the, uh, in the fridge. For a company it's nice and in a big building where he was employee number four two. I do like Marmite. Big employee fan. Employee number four two seven's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room four two seven and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-ending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. A bit floaty, but never mind. I'm just trying to figure out the controls. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. So where is the meeting room? What if I don't want to go to the meeting room? Or am I just going to end up there anyway? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Well, not gonna do that. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth drink. the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I didn't. I'm not I didn't sure. vote Ben. He really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please. What? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? I don't Are you trust that you. Convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why? I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. 
Don't believe you. That Don't I'm trust you. Side. Give me a chance. I just had a feeling that that was gonna like end up like dropping me or something. What does that say? Danger everywhere. Okay. 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 I mean, I've got trust issues already with this narrator. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. You know what? Just to fuck with you, I'm going to walk through the red door. Oh, thank God you are willing to listen to me. <laughs> we'll you see. You see that I really have wanted you to be happy all this time. The problem is all these choices. The two of us always trying to get somewhere that isn't here. Running and running and running, just the way you're doing right now. Don't you see that it's killing us, Stanley? <laughs> I just... I want it to stop. I would... We would both be so much happier if we just... Stopped. And I think... Well, I think I have a solution. Here. Let me show you. Or I could just keep going this way. Go through that one. Okay, what's happened now? Hmm. What do we want? What are we looking for? Hmm. Here. Yes. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? If we just stay right here, right in this moment, with this place, Stanley, I think I feel happy. I actually feel happy. <laughs> okay. That's enough happiness. No, wait. Where are you going? You can have too much happiness, you know. Oh, no. Stay away from those stairs. If you hurt yourself, if you die, the game will reset. We'll lose all of this. Please, no, Stanley, let me stay here. Don't take this from me. <laughs> Please, Stanley, think about what you're doing. No! Ah! That was not oh. kind of not intentional. Thank God you lived. You had me worried there for a moment. Now... <laughs> Can we please get back to the other room? No. Can I go back no, up? No, no. What are you doing, Stanley? Please, I'm asking you not to take this away from me. I can't go back to what I was before. If you die, we'll both go back. Why are you doing this? Let's try again. Three. Stanley, let's go back to the other room. Come on, Can just you do one, that for me? Just one more time. I want to break the... My God. Is this really how much you dislike my game? <laughs> that you'll throw yourself from this platform over and over to be rid of it? You were literally willing to kill yourself to keep me from being happy. Pretty Am I much. reading the situation correctly? Ready. Three. Well, maybe you're just getting a kick out of it. I am, believe I me. I don't know anymore. But one more time. I just wanted us to get along. <laughs> but I guess that was too much to ask. It looks like you wanted to make a choice after all. I do. Well, this one is yours. Let's go this way. Whoop. Is it over? <laughs> oh, wow. Let me start, isn't it? Nice. I'm going back. <laughs> wow, okay. So we're back here again. Workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to I mean, go to I the just meeting room. Break Perhaps his legs in up or a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he oh, entered the door on his side. left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there.
Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Down here looks more interesting. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all? None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet That's when he looked point. down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. Oh, this is like all a dream. That's annoying. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself Is this going to end? Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. Oh, drink. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? Yeah, yeah, this voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Yeah, 27 Let months is pretty, pretty special. Thanks, Sensible Steve. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. And then we're back here again. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. I mean, this is going places. It's interesting. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. 
But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day, the very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Yeah, I mean, is it possible to do this and not die? Is that the thing, right? I mean, I'm back here again. Okay. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, uh, this was enough. not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Wow, yes, no, this good. room. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. What is down there? I've not been down here. Let's try it. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. What's down here? But Stanley didn't want to go back to the office. He wanted to wander about and get even further off track. Yeah, why so not? now in order to get back, he needed to go, um, uh, uh, da, 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 da. From here, it's, um, left. Well, I ain't been given any options here. Thanks, Colonel Wilson, for the stuff. Oh, no. No, it's to the right, my mistake. No, oh, no, stop no, being no, a dick. Not Come right. on. Why would I have ever said it was to the right? What was I thinking? It's clearly... Okay, oh, I'm dear. really it's hot. I'm going to switch a fan on. Does that make does does that sound too loud? Let's see, we went down right, left, down, left, right. Because I'm really hot. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yes. Down. I've got okay. it now. This story is absolutely, definitely this way. Okay, that's good. Because that that is a nice that is a nice no, cool breeze. No, 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 no. This isn't right at all. You're not supposed to be here yet. This is all a spoiler. Quick, Stanley, close your eyes. Okay, 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 okay. We just, we just have to get back to, um, oh. Who am I kidding? It's all rubbish now. The whole story completely unusable. Oh, How about bollocks. rather than waste my time trying oh, to shit. salvage this nonsense, we'll just restart the game from the beginning. And this time, suppose we don't wander so far off track, hmm? Okay, from the top. How has that happened? All right. Okay, that's another ending. I mean, I don't know if anyone's keeping counts of um, how many endings I've All had now. All of co-workers were gone. What it's been quite it a lot. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had. I mean, do I have memo. to follow like this this main path, or and not? Otherwise, I'm not going to get anything. When Stanley, wait, wait. And oh, no, wait a minute. Oh, this is no, different. I, I like this. No, I restarted. I swear, I definitely restarted the game over, completely fresh. Everything should be. Oh, did something change? Stanley, did you change anything when we were back in that room with all the monitors? Did you move the story somewhere or... Uh... Hold on. Why am I asking you? I'm the one who wrote the story. It was right here just a minute ago. I know for sure that it's here somewhere. Okay, then. It's an adventure. Come, Stanley. Let's find the story. Go for it.
coming up. I'll say it. This is the worst adventure I've ever been on. I can promise you there definitely was a story here before. Do we just... Do we need to restart the game again? Well, I find it unlikely that we'll ever progress by starting over and over again, but it's got to be better than this. Okay, let's give it a shot. Why not? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. I mean, am I just being bullied here into having to take the correct, like, the correct okay, input? Yep. Oh, it's okay. Worse. Right, okay. I That's might better. be remembering this wrong. It's possible the story is back where we just came from. Why don't we go back the other direction and see if we missed anything? I'm a, I'm a person. Uh -huh. I, I can choose to do what I want something. to do. The story. I don't like to do what the game tells Here me. Here it comes. No, wait. Never mind. Not the story. Okay, let's head back the other way and retrace our steps. Now this... Well, I'll be honest. I don't recognize this place at all. Is this the story? I don't think so. I can't quite recall, but I believe my story took place in an office building. It, is that correct? Hmm. Do you remember, Stanley? Or do you know what? Since I've completely forgotten what we were supposed to be doing, how about this? You win! Congratulations! Hey. I know you put in a lot of hard work, and it really paid off. So, good job. Oh, no. No, I don't feel right about this at all. We both know you didn't put in any actual work for that win. Some people win fair Kidding, and square. Kidding, I've been sitting here for what? Not one of those I don't situations. know, a while. Okay, I'm getting weirded out by whatever this place is. I don't care what might happen this time, I have to restart. All right, I've got a solution. <laughs> this time, to I make like sure that. we don't get lost, That's I've cool. employed the help of the Stanley Parable Adventure Line. <laughs> Just follow the line. How simple is that? Nice. Yeah, no, I'm all right. I want to see how they resolve this bit again. No, no, I'm down. We're leaving it up to the line from now on. being forced I don't want to follow it but I don't know where to go because there's no other no other routes can't get that way Being forced. Don't like that. Let's try going this way again. <sighs> Gonna have to go back that way. See? The line knows where the story is. It's over in this direction. Onward, Stanley, to destiny. Though, here's a thought. Wouldn't wherever we end up be our destination, even if there's no story there? Or to put it another way, is the story of no destination still a story? Simply by the act of moving forward, are we implying a journey such that a destination is inevitably conjured into being via the very manifestation of the nature of life itself? Okay, Stanley, I need to follow this train of thought for a minute. Just stick with me. 
Now we can both agree that the nature of existence is in fact a byproduct of one subjective experience of that existence, right? Okay, now if my experience of your existence rests inside of your subjective experience of this office, is this office in fact the skeleton of my own relative experiential mental subjective construct? Whoa, 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 whoa. hang on. That got a bit weird back there. Well, I'd like to apologize. Not sure where I was going with all that. You know what? I think what we need right now is a bit of music to lighten the mood. <laughs> the music, go back and look at that fern. No. Wait, what? We're back at the office? No. No, no. Line, you do know we're looking for the Stanley Parable, right? The story? Is any of this ringing a bell? Oh, no, 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 not again. Line, how could you have done this to us? And after we trusted you, after everything we've been through, you... No, oh, I can't take this anymore. To hell with it. Restart. <laughs> you know what, Stanley? I say forget the adventure line. What's it ever done for us? We're intelligent people, right? Why can't we make up our own story? Something yeah. exciting, daring, mysterious. All. This all sounds perfectly doable. Why don't we simply start wandering in... Well, I don't know. How about this direction? Is there another that I can choose? No. Now, yes, this is exciting. Just me and Stanley forging a new path, a new story. Well, it could be anything. What do you want our story to be? Go wild. Okay, I'm not Use scared. your imagination. Whatever it might be, Stanley, I'm ready for it. <sighs> it's not that sound. Oh no, not you again. Stanley, I'd also like to veto the line from having any role in our awesome new story. No lines or monitor rooms. Just don't acknowledge it, and we should be fine. I don't know, maybe the line has got my best interests at heart. Ah, a choice. We get to make a decision. From here, the story is in our control. How important we mustn't squander the opportunity. In fact, I believe I need a minute to think here. Just walk in circles for a minute. Okay, so I know that each door has to lead somewhere, which means that somewhere at the place where we're trying to go, there must be a reverse door that leads here. And that, in turn, means that our destination corresponds with the counter-inverted reverse door's origin. So starting from the right, let us ask, will taking the right door lead us to where we're going? And since the answer is clearly yes, then by all accounts, the door on the right is the correct one. Another victory for logic. Come, Stanley. Our destiny awaits.
being dictated to by logic. Oh, hold up, what's this? Hmm. Hmm. The confusion ending. You're telling me <laughs> that's what this is? It's all one giant ending? And we're supposed to restart the game what, eight, eight times? That's really how all this goes? It's all determined? So now, according to the schedule, I restart again. Then what? Am I just supposed to forget? Well, what if I don't want to forget? My mind goes blank simply because it's written here on this, this thing, wall. Well, who consulted me? Why don't I get to decide? Why don't I get a say in all of this? Is it really? No, it can't be. I, d I don't want it to be. I, I don't want the game to keep restarting. I, I don't want to forget what's going on. I don't want to be trapped like this. I won't restart the game. I won't do it. I won't do it. I won't do it. And the timer to stopped? Does that mean, um, did we do it? Did we break the cycle? The, um, whatever it is that made this schedule? How would we even know? Will someone come for us? Will something happen? So, okay. I guess now we just wait, you know. I suppose in some way that this is a kind of story, wouldn't you agree? I'm not quite sure if we're in the destination or the journey. Though they're always saying that life is about the journey and not the destination. Maybe it's so I hope that's where we are right now. We'll find out, won't we? Eventually. Well, in the meantime, if you didn't like that. That's weird. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly right, well. Right, I want to try something Perhaps else Perhaps he here. wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. The lounge was sublime, a work of art. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not it's sure. It's a narrative line really down there as well. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you or what? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why, I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. Now last time I did, and then I did the whole falling off the ledge thing. This time I think I'm gonna go. Aha, perhaps you misunderstood. Stanley walked through the red door. I still don't think we're communicating properly. <laughs> Stanley walked <laughs> through the red door. Oh, that's good. Okay. Let's go through the red door then. Oh, thank God you are willing to listen to me. Do you see that I really have wanted you to be yeah, happy Yeah, see, it's unless you've already The gone. problem is all these choices. The two of us always trying to get somewhere that isn't here. Running and running and running just the way you're doing right now. Don't you see that it's killing us, Stanley? I just... I wanted to stop. I would... We would both be so much happier if we just... Stopped. And I think... Well, I think I have a solution. Here. Let me show you. Hmm. What do we want? What are we looking for? Hmm? Here, yes. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? If we just stay right here... No, wait. Where are you going? Oh, no. Stay away from those stairs. If you hurt yourself, if you die, the game will reset. We'll okay, lose all Okay, we've already done this. this. I don't really fancy going up and down that again. Let's go back on oh, this way. 
Good, good. We can't be too safe. Promise me you won't go back there. Hmm? Just, just stay here. Ah, oh, it's Fantavision. How long have I got? What do I do? Well, obviously, you know. Promise? Yeah, I mean, this is pretty much Farley's Fantasy Zone. And this is what happens every week when we go into it. Well, when it happens. It hasn't happened for a while, actually. Yeah. Getting a bit bored now. Are these gonna like coalesce into something? Ooh. I'll tell you one thing, we had a nasty moment today. Uh, maybe some of us will have to see. Nasty moment today, got an email through saying that my flight to Sheffield had been cancelled from Germany uh, because it was EasyJet and because it seems that in the UK they're just cancelling all flights all the time now so I was like oh dear that's uh, that's a bit of a problem but it's fine I've booked another one and yeah hopefully it'll, that one will be okay I think we can move on from this now because it's getting a bit annoying. No! What do we talk about? You're risking everything we achieved here. So have I got to just chuck myself? You heard off me this before, now? didn't you? You will die. What about this? Isn't getting through to you? Please, no, Stanley. Let me stay here. Don't take this from me. Please, like Stanley. Think about what you're doing. Here. No! Oh, thank God you lived. You had me worried there for a moment. Now, can we please get back to the other room? We can, but it's a bit boring, isn't it? There. See? This is what you want. This is where we can both be happy. We really can. Can't if just... we stop moving, we just have to stop moving. I mean, it, ultimately, do I just have to... I don't know, because I don't know what I'm doing now with this. Stanley, go back. There's nothing good that can come from this. I mean, it's just going to end with me having to do this over and over again, isn't it? No. No, no. What are you doing? Do you just not believe me? What can I say to convince you? I mean, I quite enjoyed doing this earlier, but now it's getting a bit... Stanley, let's go back to the other room. Can you do that for me? All right, well, let's try not to, not moving over there. Yes, perhaps you can. Perhaps you finally see what I'm talking about. I know you'll see. You'll see that we can't be happy if we leave this place. You can see that, can't you? Well, it does seem to be going that way, doesn't it? Because um, last time I just repeatedly threw myself off. It's very Jeff Minter. It's, it's not. I 
Okay. I tried walking off the edge in here and nothing nothing happened. Favourite veg was probably a cucumber. I quite like cucumbers. I've already had a shot, I've had about four already. Oh whatever, Ben, I don't care if we get into that nonsense. Cucumber is not gross if you combine it with tuna fish, for example. Oh, tuna, mayo, cucumber. It's nice. It's true, Ben. I mean, if you're studying history, you ain't looking at facts, believe me. <laughs> I mean, what, what am I doing with this now? Because... Am I going to sit here and just look at this? The funniest fruit? Um, I don't know, actually. It is pretty much a screensaver, that's true. I mean, earlier on it was changing into different shapes and stuff now it's not even doing that I mean I'm thinking I'm just going to have to throw myself off the thing again that's the thing Gary it, it does, it does gets into your head this game has It's, you know you're thinking is, is something going to happen if I just sit here long enough the answer is no so I'm going to go and I'm going to chuck myself off that thing again Perhaps not. I mean, it's the only option, isn't it? It's the only rational choice. My God, is this really how much you dislike my game? That you'll throw yourself from this platform over and over to be rid of it? You were literally willing to kill yourself to keep me from being happy. Am I reading the situation correctly? Yeah, we've been here before. Or maybe you're just getting a kick out of it. I don't know anymore. I just wanted us to get along. But I guess that was too much to ask. It looks like you wanted to make a choice after all. Well, this one is yours. Yeah, I choose not to cho not to play. Is it over? It's going to restart, isn't it? I'm going back. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet, there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Hoping coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. 
not been up here yet. Extreme bathrooms. What closet? Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 288. Four, five. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Right, so... Okay. Let's play ball. Stanley just yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Where's that? Oh, it's over here. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Hmm. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. <laughs> I'm more than happy to find out what that's going to be. The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. I ain't going to do that. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. <laughs> Quite right. As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, it reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plucking the eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. Farewell, Stanley. What a way to go, eh? Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. Okay.
And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office, as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? Sorry, I know I'm not speaking very much here, but I'm just enjoying reading all this stuff. Because it's quite interesting. Yeah, I know they do, Gary, but I'm not going to do that. I, I'm not a streamer. <clears throat> it, I mean, yeah, I mean, every stream that we do is an experimental stream. I was going to do this one, no controller, um, but. Uh, yeah, didn't in the end. <laughs> oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No. Perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. But listen to me. You can still save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Turn off your PlayStation. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let... Okay. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Okay. I'm going this way. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. I want to see what happens with that other... That other Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office.
So there's some stuff to explore over there, but I'll do that later. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud to nobody. He began wildly tearing through papers on the boss's desk, pulling books off the shelf, looking behind paintings, desperate for clues to his situation. But his attention was caught by a keypad behind the boss's desk. What could its purpose be? In fact, this keypad guarded the terrible secret that lay buried below his feet. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known that. That is the one I was going for, Ben. Yeah, that was what I was going for, but I'd completely forgotten what it was. What did he say that was, though? Now I've forgotten. Was Stanley two, just eight, four, sat five? around twiddling his thumbs. Trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that this read wanna, Mind Control I'm Facility. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. Oh, I'm down. Oh, what right, horrible down here secret did this place hold, Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! It was unthinkable. I don't think I'd be that bothered. Wasn't it? Was it well, even possible? That. Had he truly I spent been his entire to avoid life utterly blind <sighs> to the Doing world? Doing what the narrator said for the whole game, so I'm obviously lying. But here was the proof: the heart of the operation, controls labelled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded. From I mean, my one would just be switched to indifferent. And as the cold reality of his like, past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. You didn't just activate the controls, did you? Why not? After they kept you enslaved all these years, you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself. Is that what you wanted? Control? Oh, Stanley, I applaud your effort, I really do. But you need to understand, there's only so much that machine can do. You were supposed to let it go, turn the controls off, and leave. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do much better than that. I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you do. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. 
In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, nuclear detonators are said to explode, eliminating the entire complex. How long until detonation then? Mm, let's say, um, two minutes. Ah, now this is making things a little more fun, isn't it, Stanley? It's your time to shine. You are the star. It's your story now. Shape it to your heart's desires. Oh, this is much better than what I had in mind. What a shame we have so little time left to enjoy it. Mere moments until the bomb goes off. But what precious moments each one of them is. More time to talk about you, about me, where we're going, what all this means. I barely know where to start. What's that? You'd like to know where your co-workers are? Couldn't care less. A moment of solace before you're obliterated? All right, I'm in a good mood. You're gonna die anyway. I'll tell you exactly what happened to them. I erased them. I turned off the machine. I set you free. Of course, that was merely in this instance of the story. Sometimes when I tell it, I simply let you sit there in your office forever, pushing buttons endlessly and then dying alone. Other times, I let the office sink into the ground, swallowing everyone inside, or I let it burn to So he's a maniac. I have to say this, though. This version of events has been rather amusing. Watching you try to make sense of everything and take back the control wrested away from you, it's quite rich. I almost hate to see it go. But I'm sure whatever I come up with on the next go-around will be even better. My goodness, only 34 seconds left. But I'm enjoying this so much. You know what? To hell with it. I'm going to put some extra time on the clock. Why not? These are precious additional seconds, Stanley. Time doesn't grow on the trees. Oh dear me, what's the matter, Stanley? I mean, Stanley? he really does love the sound of Is it of that you voice? have no idea where you're going or what you're supposed to be doing right now? Or did you just assume when you saw that timer that something in this room was capable of turning it off? No, I've been quite I mean, happy to sit here. Running and, from um, button to button, screen to screen, not doing that. clicking on every little thing in this room. These numbered buttons, no, these colored ones, or maybe this big I red button, quite or this door. Everything, to, um, anything, something here will save me. Except my fate. What do you think that, Stanley? That this video game can be beaten? One sold? I mean, I think you we've established the fact that it can't what be. what your purpose in this place is? <laughs> Stanley, you're in for quite a disappointment. But here's a spoiler for you. That timer isn't a catalyst to keep the action moving along. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. You're only still playing instead of watching a cutscene because I want to watch you for every moment that you're powerless. To see you made humble. This is not a challenge. It's a tragedy. You wanted to control this world, that's fine. But I'm going to destroy it first, so you can't. Go Take a look it. at the clock, Stanley. That's 30 seconds you have left to struggle. 30 seconds until a big boom and then nothing. No ending here. Just you being blown to pieces. Will you cling desperately to your frail life? Or will you let it go peacefully? Another choice. Make it count. Or don't. It's all the same to me. All a part of the joke. And believe me, I will be laughing at every second of your inevitable life from the moment we fade in until the moment I say happily ever up. Okay, let's go back there. Wait, Stanley thought to himself. Am I sure that the orders stopped coming in? How is that possible? They never stopped. Surely I was mistaken. <laughs> oh, new content? What does that mean, new content? This feels very intro to original Half-Life. Hello, bit. and thank you for playing the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. As you may know, the Stanley Parable was a video game released in 2013 on home computers. After receiving critical and commercial success, it was expanded <laughs> upon in 2022 with the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, a reimagining of the game for consoles and home computers. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe 
features exciting new content that broadens and expands the world of the Stanley Parable, delighting audiences the world over. Please, step inside and see what thrilling new adventures await in The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Oh, well, this sounds delightful. I'm very excited to see the thrilling new Ultra Deluxe content. Okay, so far it's an elevator. Nothing special yet, but I'm sure it's just the beginning of a mesmerizing adventure. Um, is it broken? What's going on here? Should we... Should we be moving somewhere or... or oh, there we go. All right, finally, at long last, it's on to the new content. I've never been more ready. Let's do it. It's going to be a shooter now, isn't it? Hmm. Hmm. I have to say, initial impressions of Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, mostly tedious. It's as if them... Oh, okay. Let's see the content. Give me the content, Stanley. All right. All right, let's see it. Oh, I can jump. The jump circle? I mean, I've been wanting to do this for like the whole game, so taking advantage. Is... is that it? Surely that's not all the new content. There has to be something else, right? Goodness. Another elevator. Stanley, I have to say, initial impressions of this game are not positive. It's just elevators and jumping. Is this what passes for exciting new content? If this is new content, then I could just read you the whole dictionary. There's 20 hours of new content right there. Hell, I could count to 30 trillion. You could put that on the box. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, now with over a thousand hours of new content. And if... Oh, wait. There's more. Very good. Yes. I knew there had to be something else. Let's see it. I'm ready for whatever it is. <laughs> That's it? Oh, you've got to be kidding me. You see, Stanley? This is what happens when greedy video game developers with no respect for their fan base rush a cheap expansion to market for no reason other than to make an easy dollar. And don't get me started on the level of craftsmanship that's gone into it. In fact, I'm looking right now at the game's trophies, and it's hard <laughs> to believe one of them actually says, Test trophy, please ignore. What quality assurance department signed off on this? I'm infuriated and I'm offended, and I, I intend to find these people on Twitter and hold them personally accountable. Oh, it's my fault, Stanley. I built up too much anticipation around the new content, I'm afraid. It could never have lived up to such expectations. If you're still with me, why don't we just reset the game and we'll try to get back to what the Stanley parable is really about. No frills, no gimmicks. Just you and me having a great time together like always. What do you say, friend? That's quality. Psst! Stanley! Come over here! In the vent! I want to show you something! I always like a good vent. Although this does remind me of, remind me of Duke Nukem 3D. Okay, you remember how cheap and unsatisfying the new Ultra Deluxe content turned out to be? Well, it got me thinking about the past and how much better the Stanley Parable used to be. So I made something special and tucked it away here where the game's developers won't find it. Just our little secret. Take a look. I call it the memory zone. It's where I've been storing all my favorite memories so I can relive the peak experiences of my life whenever I want. Experiences like the launch of the Stanley Parable on PC. 
You see, Stanley, doesn't the memory zone remind you of how wonderful Stanley Parable was before it was sullied with a cheap PlayStation port? <laughs> Remember back in October of 2013, when the game originally launched? Back then, video games had integrity. Back then, it all meant something. Oh, the waste. And over here is where I keep reviews of the Stanley Parable. <laughs> like the stunning triumph of James journalism. 10 out of 10 from Destructoid. <laughs> James Stephanie Sterling writes, and I quote, Where so many games that aspire to be more than games end up less than any form of art, Stanley Parable strives and then succeeds to be every game ever created. Did you hear that, Stanley? Every game ever created. That's how grand and all-encompassing the original Stanley Parable was. It was literally every game ever created. Yeah, this is, it was Skyrim, this is it was Persona 3, it was all of them. And now, it's nothing. It's no games at all. It isn't even the Stanley Parable anymore. It's just a husk now. A lifeless husk with an hour of new elevator content. Here's another moving passage, this time from GameSpot.com. <laughs> the Stanley Parable is both a richly stimulating commentary on the nature of choice in games, and one that offers some of the most enjoyable, surprising, and rewarding choices I've ever been confronted with in a game. Nine out of ten. Don't you get it, Stanley? The game was perfect. It didn't need anything else. There was it Gary didn't need back new there a content. It lets me. All they had to do was transport it in pristine condition along to the PlayStation. Boom, done. And they couldn't even do that. Couldn't resist the urge to go meddling with a beloved franchise. Oh, these were simpler times, Stanley. But I wouldn't give to go back to have it all over again. Wait, hang on. I don't recall this part of the memory zone before. What's this? What's down here? Oh no, oh god no, Stanley. It's a reviews. collection of reviews from Pressurized Gas, the extremely popular online storefront for computer <laughs> games. I haven't looked at these in years. I can't even imagine what's been collecting down here. Surely these reviews were glowing as well, weren't they? Honestly, I could not be bothered to play this game to full completion. The narrator is obnoxious and unfunny, with his humor and dialogue proving to be this more is like the main than entertaining than entertaining. This is brilliant. Funny? I'm not trying to be funny. I'm trying to make a serious work of art. I suppose I could write up a handful of gags to insert into the Stanley Parable, but the game is already such a densely layered web of profound philosophical insights that I can't even imagine where I'd have the room to stick them. I'd love to talk about this on the show, but this I think people should experience this. What have we got here? Okay, let's see what this one says. While the idea for the game is good, and for someone who prefers non-linear games, this preachiness gets annoying fast. Preachy? Stanley? I'm not preachy, am I? You can tell me if I'm preachy. Honestly, you can. Oh, goodness. This is actually quite shocking for me. I, I always, well, to be honest, I had always thought of the game's dialogue as being rather terse. What to begin a real with. person? You can't this. know how much fluff I cut from the game to get it to feel as light and airy as it, well, 
I always thought it did, but maybe it wasn't. Oh dear, what an awful memory to have to hold on to. These black marks are my otherwise unimpeachable track record. I feel like a failure, like I let these people down. Perhaps the Stanley Parable isn't quite as sterling as I always remembered. What's this one got to say? Do, 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 do. You constantly have to stop doing anything so the narrator can catch up with his long-winded explanations of what's happening. I wish there was a skip button. <laughs> a skip button? Well, well, yes. Yes, I think we can do that. If I'm truly too preachy, then, then maybe letting you skip ahead for just a moment, surely it couldn't hurt. Not if it means we can strike these negative reviews from the record. Only positive reviews of the Stanley Parable. That's my motto today, and it's always been my motto. I'd do anything for the customer, Stanley. Yes, a skip button we shall have. And here it is. Go ahead and give it a shot. I'll pop you forward in time. Oh, you're back, you see? You were only frozen in time for a few minutes, but it was plenty of time for me to deliver a long, rambling monologue full of unnecessary verbal flourishes and lengthy ruminations on the nature of choice in video games. Of course, I happen to believe it was perhaps one of my more profound such ruminations. Not that, of course, you need a description of it, but if I had to describe it, I'd say... <laughs> well there, sport. You really did catch me rambling on a bit, didn't you? But that's the power of the button. The minute I start to go off on a thoughtless display of self-absorption, it's right at your fingertips to go, poof, and it's all over. <laughs> I can't wait to see what Cookie 9 will say about this, and whether they'll edit the rating of their pressurized gas review, or at least change some of the wording, perhaps. To be honest, I don't even know if one can change their review in the first place. I guess I should become better educated on how exactly pressurized gas works. Perhaps that would have been a smart thing to check on before I went on about this whole exercise of making the skip button. Although I have to imagine that after seeing this exciting new technology at work, surely whoever it is who runs pressurized gas will instantly run out and implement a new feature to make it possible to edit one's review merely because of this very situation. Yes. I think that's quite likely. Or perhaps they'll simply grant this particular user the ability to change their review so that the feature is not widely abused. I just want to see where this is going. Look, I would even be okay with pressurized gas altering this particular review so that it reads as something more benefit. From the ashes of depravity rises the phoenix of quality. How else to describe the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe? Such a revolutionary step forward in the lineage of one of the most beloved video game properties of all time. The additions and changes made to this expansion will surely resonate in the annals of the history of all media ever made. It is perhaps true to say... All right, okay, I, 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 okay, welcome okay. back, Stanley. Now, I should it's say so that the amount yeah, of time the button has been skipping through is becoming longer and longer. That last one was, well, I want to say maybe 30, 45 minutes? It's not... Stanley! Stanley! Stanley, please don't push the button again! It's been 12 hours! You've just been frozen there! I don't know why the skips are getting longer, but they're... Oh, Stanley! You're back! You're back! Oh, my goodness! I have someone to talk to again. Stanley, I... I think it's been a week. Or two weeks? I... Oh... Hello, it's you. You're here again. Welcome. I have had time to think about you and about us and about everything we've been through. I've had so much time. I stopped keeping track after a year. Have you ever sat down? That's very unsettling.
But they didn't understand the game was never meant to be funny. It was meant to have a point. It was meant to speak to the human condition. But where are the jokes? Where are the jokes? They bemoaned. They screamed. They gnashed it. The end is never 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 Yep, you're good. This is really good. I just, you know, now I'm just pressing because I just want to see where it's going to end up next. That's a lot of Halo then. Don't like the sound of that. Still skip. No. Well, that was interesting. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Okay, so now there's new, new content. Oh, good. You noticed my sign. Yes, I have something very exciting to show you. I'll see it. I've been reflecting on the Stanley Parable and about how roundly disappointing this ultra deluxe version has turned out to be. The original Stanley Parable was a landmark, and any new content for it should live up to that legacy. So forget this ultra deluxe nonsense. I say we take it one step even further. Which is why I'm very proud to announce for the first time ever the Stanley Parable 2. Yes, you see, isn't this far superior to a measly port with a few minor additions? Think of all the new territory we'll cover with a fully-fledged sequel. An entirely new experience, built from the ground up. Why there are so many possibilities, it could go in so many different directions. This is what fans have truly been asking for. Calling it the Stanley Parable 2 is just so much catchier than Ultra Deluxe, don't you think? Ultra Deluxe? What does it even mean? 
but the Stanley Parable too. Now that's an artistic statement right there. It's future-oriented. It screams progress and innovation and long-term franchising potential. <laughs> the brick of Walter approach. Now, to be clear, I haven't quite nailed down what exactly the Stanley Parable 2 is going to be, but let's take a look at some of the features I've been developing for it. I figure that if I can loosely organize a handful of interesting concepts, that surely the game will sort of naturally spring up around them. It'll all work itself out. Game development is much more of a fuzzy magic than anything scientific or logical, really. <laughs> Sequels are good. Here we are. Go on, try out some of the new features. For the Stanley Parable 2, I asked myself, what do players really want? And of course, the first and most obvious answer is that they want to be individually recognized and validated as people. So with that in mind, my first addition to the game is this button which speaks the name of the person playing the game. Isn't that wonderful? Jim. Sorry, I should have clarified. Right now, the button only says the name Jim. But of course, in the final game, this button will say your name, whatever name that is. It's close enough. Here, let's have you role play as Jim to really simulate the full experience of this feature. Just play along. I promise you'll love it. Okay, here we go. Let's take a deep breath, clear your mind, forget whoever you are, and simply become a person named Jim. Jim. Whoa, 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 hold on. I wasn't finished setting up the backstory. If you don't properly roleplay as Jim, then you'll never understand the impact of this button. Otherwise, it's just a stupid button that says somebody else's name. Okay, we're doing it again, and this time let me finish Do you first. know what, Gary? You're right. It does <clears throat> sound like me. Now, allow yourself to become Jim. Jim. All right, fine, whatever. It's just a meaningless <laughs> button that says Jim. Are you happy now? Get out of here. I'm done with this button. Why don't you go humiliate me in front of a different feature that I worked very hard on? Jim. See, if you'd only played along, Jim. that would have been your Jim. name, the button Jim. says. But Jim. no. Jim. Instead, Jim. Oh, Jim. I can't Jim. even think Jim. about it. Jim. I'm taking Jim. the Jim button away. Jim. Jim. No! No! Jim. Jim. No! No! That's a shame. I was enjoying pressing that button. Can I get to it under here? Maybe I'll only let people named Jim play the Stanley Parable too. An epilogue would be fun, wouldn't it, Stanley? Yes, yes, it will go at the end of the, um, uh, well, we'll figure that out later.
Now, here's something special. You remember that broken test trophy that got left in the game on accident? Well, I'm developing a technology to simply give you the trophy. Yes. You see, you'll come to this lever, and when you pull it, the trophy will be given to you. It's a okay, perhaps I should have clarified. This is technology that will exist. Right now, the trophy is still fully broken. I'm not a wizard, Stanley, but I guarantee it will be fixed in the sequel to at last satisfy the hordes of ravenous fans all over the world who have been uproariously demanding this feature. Gamers, we hear you, and I promise it will happen. What else? What other exhibits haven't we seen yet? Okay, I'll be honest, I haven't yet decided on this one. I think that in the new version, the office could use a bit of decoration, like balloons. But I'm undecided on Get Well Someday and Happy 12th Birthday. Which would you go with? I'm going for Happy 12th Birthday. You know, Sometimes when you solicit another person's opinion, it makes you realize that you knew which one you actually really wanted all along. Get well someday it is. Oh, it's just being... Where is it? Or actually, maybe I should have gone with... No. No, I've made my decision. We're moving on. A common complaint of the Stanley Parable was that it was confusing and paradoxical, that it engendered a chaotic sense of reckless despair in those who played it. Well, I am happy to say that after much consideration, I've engineered a clever solution to this fundamental problem with the game. It's the Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket. You see, Stanley, any time you're holding the bucket, a sense of calm and ease will fill your mind and your heart. It's true. As long as you hold on to the bucket, the many disorienting contradictions of the Stanley parable will feel perfectly normal and perhaps even comforting. You may even come to long for the gentle embrace of jarring cognitive dissonance while the bucket is in your arms. And to be honest, it's a much more convenient solution for me than actually redesigning the game to be less uncomfortable. Can you imagine what a pain in the ass that would be? Yes, the bucket is the perfect solution. Come on, give it a try. <laughs> Can you feel it? The glow of comfort, even in the face of crushing despair, must already be sweeping through your body. And in fact, can I say that I do believe the bucket lends you an air of charisma as well? I think that just holding it has made you the slightest bit more attractive as a person. The benefits of the bucket seem to go on and on, don't they? All this and more await you in the Stanley Parable too. Does anyone give out awards for most enjoyable bucket in a video game? That really should be an award if it isn't already. It's very Valve. I mean, that's not a bad thing, obviously. Oh man, I'm gonna have to stop soon though. Oh, I'm very tired. Oh goodness, um, Stanley, this is fairly awkward. I, I hate to do this, but. Before you leave, you really should go to the collectibles exhibit. You see, there is a surprise I was going to spring on you later, and it involves the collectibles. And I really do hate to break the illusion, but it's important that you go see the collectibles, okay? All right, I'll get out of your hair now. Now there's no ah, jumping. Collectibles. 
Now it's a real video game. In the Stanley Parable 2, you'll run around gathering up these miniature Stanley figurines. And what's truly innovative is that there will be no reward for collecting all of them. I don't want to stifle the intrinsic joy of watching a number go up. You simply collect all of them, and then you move the hell on with your unremarkable life. God, it really is the worst when you collect everything in a video game and then they give you a big fancy reward for it. Absolutely tragic. I nearly fell asleep then. I'm genuinely... I mean, it's not because this is boring me, because it's really not. It's brilliant. I'm just really tired, and I shouldn't have drunk all that alcohol. So, Stanley, what do you think? Do you like all of the new features? Yes, I know it's not exactly clear yet how exactly these features will come together as one single coherent video game, but I can feel it in my soul. It's going to work. There's definitely a good game in there somewhere. Say, let's do an experiment. I'll arrange these new features together, and we'll see whether or not it coheres into a meaningful gameplay experience. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Here it is. I give you the Stanley Parable 2. Um, well, um, I mean, there's potential here, right? It's sort of... Okay, never mind. Hold on, let me do a different arrangement. Okay, yes, yes, this is much better. I feel good about this. Here we go, version two. <sighs> Who am I kidding, Stanley? This isn't a coherent video game at all. It's a lot of gags. And I do very much enjoy creating gags, but they don't add up to anything. I wanted more than anything to create a sequel that would capture all the magic of the first game. I wanted fans to love it. No matter how good these gags are, they wouldn't stand on their own. They would need the structure and the gameplay of the original. Wait, maybe that's it. I can take the original Stanley Parable and simply, well, insert a few of my new features into it. Tastefully, of course, with respect, with care for the vision and integrity of the original game. Would it possibly work? I suppose it could, but it would need a really, really tremendous title screen. A title screen that says with bold and uncompromising conviction, this is the Stanley Parable 2. Let me see if I can whip something up. <laughs> All right, perfect. Go ahead. Take a look. That's pretty good. I mean, I'm going to have to stop here because I'm really tired and I, I'm this is falling asleep. Like, actually falling asleep. Um, but again, not because this isn't great, because this is brilliant. Like, really, really, seriously brilliant. Oh, yeah. They've even got all the balloons. They got the balloons all from the um, workers were gone. What could it stuff. mean? I mean, I'm, I'm going to come back to this and play it on my own because. Perhaps he had simply uh, missed but a I would also urge anybody who's in any way interested to play this. And also, if you played it before, then probably play this Ultra one because it does seem to have a bunch of new stuff. And I'm sure I've probably not even done hardly anywhere near, um, you know, what you can what you can do. No, you can't jump. But no, that is superb. That was really very enjoyable. I'm surprised I'd never played it before. Anyway. Ugh. Thanks for watching. I'll be back next week. Uh, next week I'm going to be playing um, The Quarry, I think, because that was very kindly gifted um, to us by um, the name. Oh, this is... Why do I always do this? 
Why do I always do this? I always say something and then I forget someone's name and then it's just really embarrassing and I sound like an idiot who doesn't care and it's not that's not the case. It's just I'm stupid. It was by Lupin Central. So thank you Lupin Central cuz um yeah, really we really appreciate that. So yeah, we 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 got that um to play. Um yeah, it's not contempt I swear. It's just I my brain is terrible. Um, but yeah, the quarry uh, next week, or quarry or whatever it's called. Ooh, that's what it's going to be. Um, hopefully it's good. Uh, but yeah, thanks, and I'll see you next week for that. Yeah. <laughs>